warm, but it's a perfect evening. It should be a good night if the bugs don't eat the light. You know, as the sun goes down in a river like this, one of the most formidable and elusive of all the predators in fresh water goes on the prowl. I'm talking about the flathead catfish, more elusive even than the musky. Fewer people have caught bigger flatheads or big flatheads than have actually caught muskies. And talking about size in a fish, the modern day uh, hook and line record is 100 pounds, but there's pretty good indication that the old days, and maybe even still yet today, there were fish of 150, maybe up to 200 pounds. Only two fish in fresh water, in fresh water you actually get bigger than the, uh, the flathead catfish. And the principles for catching flatheads, uh, it's really not that difficult. You are going to have to fish at night, a uh, very elusive predator. And what we've got here, uh, Toad and I have been fishing for a couple days, and this is the biggest and the baddest of all the holes in about a 10-mile section of river. And uh, Toad, why don't you tell them what we got here that makes us so unique for flathead catfish? I think the good thing about this hole, Doug, it's the <clears throat> deepest and the best water we've got for several miles of the river since we've been scouting. We've got good brush piles laying in six and eight feet of water. Those big cats ought to be laid back up in there during the day and tonight, just at dark, they should come out of there and go on a prowl. Maybe we can snatch some up with some good live bait. A lot of people have misconceptions about catfish. They think you have to have something dead and stinking to catch catfish, and, and that's just not the case, especially with flatheads. They like a good lively bait. I'm gonna pitch this baby right out here by this brush pile and. Shouldn't be long, I'll have some action. Now, I don't have a clicker on this reel, so what I like to do is use a rod holder, lay it in there like this, put it on free spool, and I just use a stick down here on the line. That way, when a cat hits it, he's gonna knock my stick out of there, and he'll have a free a free line so that he can run with the bait. Now all we are rigged with here is a 5 odd hook and some weights of course to hold the, the bait down. And another misconception about catfishing is that you have to have this leader up here so the fish aren't shy of this whole setup that you have here. But that's nothing could be further from the truth when you're dealing with snags. You want these weights very close to the actual bait. In fact, I let them slide all the way up to the hook here, and as long as you've got a nice, fresh, lively bait, the flathead catfish is not exactly bashful. So we're going to pitch this one out right in front of this snag area here also. And I want you to notice the kind of tackle that I'm using. You know, if we're talking uh, small channel cats during the daytime, almost any kind of tackle will, will work, but we're talking the same kind of tackle that I use for muskies. And 36 pound, you know, at least 30 pound test, probably 36 and up to 40 pound test line. You are going to have to put the meat to the fish when they grab the bait. Uh, now the rigging that I use here is to set in the rod holder just like Otis is, but I've got a clicker on this and so I put the reel and free spool and set the clicker and that keeps constant tension and, and when the cat takes the bait, you're going to hear it. I'd say about another 15 minutes since this thing's quiet down a little bit. I can already hear the carp starting to suck on the brush piles. Then we'll get a little action. Yeah, fishing for flatheads is pretty much a nighttime affair except for early in the season and maybe way late in the year. But it's not fast. That's Unfortunately, it's not fast. It's fishing for big fish. Sometimes it's an all-night affair. Yeah, one thing about it, we get plenty of time. working here. It's taking a little while. Yeah, that looks like a, that's a good fish. Oh, oh, look at him go. Out here in the water, just a little bit further. Oh, good fish, Toad. You're back. <laughs> and there we are. You're going to have to come out here and get him. Too bad, isn't he? Too bad of a fish. Oh, he'll go about 15, 18 pounds. Let's see if I can get a hold of his jaw. Well, I got both hands full here with the flashlight. Still hold still. Ah, right down in here. You bet. Oh, you bet. Ah! Uh -huh. Those are dandy. Yeah? What? I seven? just wonder how many of them are in this about, hole. About seven pounds, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he's at least seven. <laughs> His head weighs seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, 15? Yeah, I would say a good 15 or so. Pretty fish. Should really we do a turn him loose? Uh, yeah, let's. Yeah, I got that other one for still photos. Boy, we'll let tough him go. skin. 
boy, that hook is really buried in that old corner of his mouth. Let's just, just cut her out. Just cut the hook and let her. Okay. He can have a little rod out of there in a day or two. Well, that won't hurt him a bit. No. Here, let him go. Back to the depths. Oh, that's a lot of fish. That's a lot of fish for one night, I'll tell you that right now. You know, Doug, I think a lot of fishermen, cat fishermen, make the mistake. Of when they come to a river, they just fish the first hole they come to. Oh, absolutely. You know, we know a, about a nine mile section of river here, and this is absolutely the biggest and the baddest, I'm talking the deepest hole in this section. And we've got a five mile straight section above us and all the timber from up there is blown into this big corner here. This is an exceptional hole. It's just not any hole that you might come to. Do you think that these <clears throat> cats are gonna just live in this hole or just gonna stay in this hole? Or do you think they're gonna go up or downstream to other holes? Well, when the, when the water's down like this, the fish are going to get in a big hole like that, they're going to stay here. Now, if the water comes up, they might move around a little, but for right now, we've got a resident population of catfish almost trapped right in this hole because of the low water. Well, as long as we keep our place, baits placed just right, it's just a matter of time, then we should get Absol some action. Absolutely. Pretty good chicken, eh? Bite? I don't know. I mean, look. Toad! Toad! That's a, that's a flathead catfish. Toad! Oh, yeah, I got a fish. He's you a good, got him? Good fish, let me tell you, this is a stout. Well, pump Powell, him in. Smokes. Pump yeah, him I in. I got him, I got him, here he comes. Don't horse him too bad. No. Get him in where we can see him. Not just a minute, not just a minute. Get a little closer over here with, you all right with the light? Really hogging in there. Oh, they're so tough. Oh, look at that. Don't lose it. No, don't worry. Oh, they are so kind. Oh. He's a Dan. Whoa. Easy, easy, right. I am getting the drag set. Oh, here he comes in. I'll get in behind him when you get him in the shell. All right, let me get him in here tight before you try to get him. Oh, he's a hog. There he is. Holy smokes. That's this is Dan. Wait now. Can you get him by the lip? Oh, I can get him right here. Whoa, now we're talking flathead catfish, huh? That is a dandy. Oh, that is some fish. Look at that. Boy, look at the head on that. Huh? That We've fish got to is... keep him for some still shots later. All right. Well, that fish is 37. I'm guessing 37 inches long. He's 25, a... 26, maybe 27 pounds. I don't know. Yeah, I'll tell you what, go. Go get me that keep sack there. I want to put him in there. I want to get some a few shots with okay. him pretty soon. Oh, that is some kind of critter, huh? Holy smokes. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> this head's bigger than yours. Yeah, almost. <laughs> oh. Tell you what, hand me the keep sack now. And I'm gonna... Yeah, we'll just slide him in right here first like this. Oh, hey, some kind of fish. Was he gonna fit? Oh, yeah. I had a, had a good one before. There we go. I'm going to get the drug out in here. Huh? I'll huh? drag him out. So that surprises me. This is a small river. I really didn't think we'd get one that big. I told you. Yeah. Ooh, that's hot there. You know, I think, Doug, once the guys found the place to fish, I think the real key is having good bait. Oh, I agree with you, you know. It's got to be lively, got to be lively, and it should be big. Uh, you know, the stuff that we're using tonight, go maybe six, seven, eight inches, but if you're talking suckers, I'd go eight, maybe 10 inches. But it's got to be lively. Just, you know, bait suckers, no good. Oh, there goes my stick. Yeah, yeah, that looks like a... Feels pretty good. Oh, it's a good fish, Toad. Keep his head down, just keep his head down right there. That's it. Oh, you bet. Big, there he comes. Big fish. That's another 25. Right, no, he's coming. Okay, okay, go ahead. 
so I can get a better grip. Look at the size of that mouth. Oh, yeah. Another good fish. You bet. He's as big as the last one. He's a little skinnier, though. And he's not quite as heavy as the big one. You know, this the, is Andy. I don't know how many pounds of fish we got out of here tonight, but <laughs> the whole point is, is that this is just not an average hole. We've been up and down the river looking things over. It's taken us a couple days, but it's really paid off. Location is half the key, then, of course, the good live bait. That's a beautiful fish. Should we turn them loose? Well, how big are you guessing first here? 